Hey everyone, Mamie Carson here with OneJoyousSkip.com and today I'm creating a project with the Concord and Knight stamp set called Hello Lovely. This set is my new favorite. It can be used um, with the layering elements or you can use it just with the main image on its own and it's super versatile. I have created several different panels with various mediums and I love all the different variations that you can achieve with it. And I'm showing you here if you're using the layering aspect or if you're just using the lines and how you can do water coloring or you can use your Copic markers or your colored pencils. It's just a really great set and it's my new favorite. I'm so excited to be doing this video. So I'm starting my project using some Strathmore 400 series 140 pound watercolor card and I'm using my stamp platform uh, to position the stamp and to give me the ability to double stamp if I need to because it is on watercolor cardstock. I'm inking the stamp with some antique linen distress ink making sure that I press uh, press firmly to make sure I get ink all over it and then also make sure that I press and smooth evenly to get a good impression <clears throat> on the stamping platform. I'm trying to avoid double stamping because I want to keep the lines really nice and light. And so I only did it one time and I have some really nice light lines here to work with. And I usually don't want to dry this so that I can get even lighter lines when I start watercoloring. So I'm gonna create an ink palette using various distress inks. And I'm using these inks today because I love the soft buildable colors that I can get with them. And um, they're really great for, like I said, they're great for layering. So you can get a lot of contrast and you can get a lot of detail with a lot of the different colors that you have to choose from. And I'm uh, using my water brushes here. I love to use my water brushes. Um, I'm adding a little bit of repositionable tape to the panel so that I don't go out of frame because I have a tendency to move my panel all over the place. <laughs> And so we're going to just jump right into the coloring process and I've sped it up quite a bit because a detailed water watercolor card takes a bit longer and I didn't want this video to be like a half hour long. So I'm starting the process um, by wetting the area I'm going to fill in, making sure to hit those lines, um, the inked lines, with the brush to help them disappear and it gives it more of that no line coloring look. And after the area is wet, I add a wash of diluted color for my first layer. And then I drop in a bit of the full strength color to the areas I want to be darker. So this is a wet on wet process and it gives you a great, loose, subtle effect. But today we're gonna take it a step farther and go for a more detailed look. So we're gonna add more layers. And after we drop in that darker color, I use a wet brush to manipulate the color a bit and I get rid of any harsh lines. And I make sure not to paint areas that are right next to each other because the colors will run and blob together since we're using the wet on wet technique. And you can also dab up color with a paper towel while it's still wet to lighten up any areas that you feel need to be a little bit lighter or if you just add a little too much color on accident. And you can absolutely leave the project with this loose watering color. It will, it'll have like a beautiful effect and it's very simple, especially for beginners if you wanna just quit here and leave it at the loose watering color. But we're gonna keep going and um, we're gonna go after the first layer and add more contrast and detail and dimension using more of the darker colors or the less diluted color. Um, so I didn't show all of the coloring because it's the same process over and over again. But if you have questions or comments about anything I did or left out, let me know down below in the comment section. Uh, I love reading your comments, even the critical ones, because I want to provide you guys with the content that you want to see. So if there's anything that you have issue with or something that you, you know, is missing from this tutorial that you would like more information on, just always comment down below and I'm usually always available to answer those questions. So um, it's the same process over and over basically as I have already mentioned before, making sure to stay away from two areas that you have just painted so that you don't run colors into each other. But all of the supplies that I use today are listed down below with direct links to the various shops that stock these items. So make sure to check that out. 
And also, I have a video coming up testing different baby wipes for stamp cleaning. So make sure to subscribe and check that out because I have found the best options after years of frustration using these baby wipes. I've tried all kinds of different things. So make sure to check that video out and let me know what you think or even let me know what kind of um, baby wipes or any other cleaning product you like to use to clean your stamps because it is important to keep our stamps clean and um, you know conditioned so they don't dry out and crack and split and all that. So um, I've already told you guys that I sped through here a little bit and I'm doing the same process just adding in the wash of color on the wet surface then coming back in with a little bit of a darker diluted color to add a little bit of the shadow and then later on after this is all dry is when we add in the details so we really want to make sure that we have this first kind of layer dry and this first layer kind of consists of the the really really light wash come back in with a little bit darker um, diluted um, wash in the kind of darker areas um, leaving an, a really nice highlight you want to make sure you leave a really nice highlight especially when you're using these yellows or any really light colors because they are so light that if you don't leave it almost white in the light areas you'll lose all of your contrast so you really I had a little bit of a struggle here with these flowers because they are yellow and the yellow is really light so the way to kind of go back against that is to add a nice dark color Color for contrast in the shadowed area so I am using a little bit more of like an orange and then making sure to leave it really really light there at the edges and I am using some of my favorite color distress inks um, for this project so I hope you like the colors um, I'm not really sure I'm not good at picking out colors I just kind of pick what looks pretty to me and I'm always drawn to pinks for flowers and I hate being that person that always uses pink but it just looks so good and it, and it really makes your card project pop so I don't know that's why I keep going back to pinks and I'll use purples for flowers but I envy those people that can do like yellow flowers or orange flowers I mean they do such a great job at having so much contrast using these low contrast colors and I really envy those people so um, but maybe one day I'll be able to use um, branch out and use some different colors but for now I just kind of stick with the colors that are tried and true for me so here I am finishing off some of the leaves and I absolutely, I can't say it enough. I love this stamp set. I was eyeballing it forever and I was like, oh, it's just kind of expensive. But now that I have it, I know that it was worth the extra few dollars to get this set because it is so versatile and there's so many different things you can do with it. Not only that, it is a beautiful bouquet with different leaves and stems and flowers and just everything you could want in a little bouquet. Okay. has a beautiful center focal point so it's really easy to know you know how to set up this image and how to use your focal point so I'm really loving this kind of off-centered look it gives me enough room to leave a sentiment on the side and it just gives you a lot of interest having it kind of off to the side if you're kind of new to stamping and you're kind of one of those people that has to center everything, um, you know, take note, put it off to the side or put one on top and one on bottom off of the corners and you'll really get a lot of interest doing it that way. So just trying to break out of the box a little bit and move your stamp around and try to get a different um, look than just putting it right in the middle because you lose a lot of options when you put the image right in the middle. So we're almost finished up with the color now. And it's looking pretty good. We're going to add in the details actually now. Now it's on to the good part. So make sure that the areas are nice and dry. So like I said, we're adding in details with full strength color. So now we don't want to add any water to the color that you pick up off your palette. Uh, for the lighter areas, you add some water to get a more diluted look. So you're basically getting, you know, like five or six colors out of one color by just diluting the, the color with some water alone. So we're trying to make sure that the brush nor the cardstock is wet with water. And this gives us those harsh lines that we're looking for to create the detail and the darkest shadows. 
And if some of the details are not like to your liking or in the or if they're in the wrong area, which I fix on this card by myself too, so it's something that happens to everybody, you just wet the area a bit and pick up the um, extra color with either a clean brush and then wipe it off on some paper towel or dab it with your paper towel if it's kind of like a larger area. And that will kind of soften those colors back out a bit, a bit and then you can kind of try again or you can leave it like that if it's kind of turning out the way you want it to. So let me know if you guys like just hate the video being sped up. I mean, I can make two videos instead, one in the faster speed and one slower with all of the coloring included. I'm just not really sure like what you guys really want to see. So I know whenever I'm watching videos, like I don't really like to watch it in real time because it just takes so long and it goes so slow. But I feel like I really had to speed this one up because there was so much coloring and with water coloring, it takes a little bit more time if you're wanting to do detailed water coloring. So just let me know like in the future, if I have a card like this, if you would rather see the full effect, maybe sped up just one time so that it's like just a little bit faster, but not like as fast as I'm going right now because I had to try to get it under I wanted to get it into 15 minutes but um, I needed to do the still shots that I was in love with and of course I needed to do the shout out at the end of the video so I'm excited to be doing the shout outs and um, I hope that you guys will visit my Instagram so that you if you want to be part of the shout out you find the post that I made about um, commenting down below the post about the YouTube shout, shout out so you can participate in that if you would like to and my Instagram name is one joyous skip so you can find me there and I'm almost done here with the details and it's looking pretty good and I'm gonna move on to my white gel pen here in just a second but I just wanted to ask you guys a question, okay? So what do you guys watch or listen to while you're crafting? Like I usually watch YouTube videos or crime documentaries, but I'm amazed by people who listen to or like watch nothing. Like I don't know if I could ever do that. I, I It's just too quiet for me. I have to have a little bit of background noise. So what do you guys do whenever you're crafting? I'm super interested because, you know, it is kind of a lonely hobby. Um, you know, you don't do it in a group unless you're doing, you know, um, you're going to retreats and things like that, but when you're at home by yourself, what do you really like to do while you're crafting to kind of just let the time pass? So like I said, I watch, let me see, I have already seen all of the forensic files. I have already finished all seasons of Unsolved Mysteries. And I'm talking about from the 80s till the very last one. Like I've seen all of them. I actually go back and watch some more of them because like I'm passively listening. I'm not 100% invested in each episode and so sometimes I'll go back. And then on YouTube there's some really great YouTubers that um, do like solved crimes or unsolved. I really like the solved ones because I like to, I like like a happy ending. Well, it's not a happy ending obviously, but I don't like loose strings. You know, I like to, I like to have it solved and the families to at least have that kind of relief of knowing what happened to their loved one or getting their loved one back or something like that. So what kind of stuff are you guys interested in? So, okay, I'm using my white gel pen here, adding in all of my little details. This is just taking it a step farther. Um, and you can use also your colored pencils. You don't have to use a white gel pen if you don't really love the way the white gel pen kind of looks. So I'm using that, but you can add your colored pencils or whatever you want to add the kind of detail that you're looking for. If you wanted to do your stamen, I guess it's called, in brown or something like that, you can totally use your colored pencil or a gel pen that's in brown. Um, I usually always use my white gel pen. I just love adding those little pops of white so now I'm all done with my coloring. I think it looks really nice. I was really surprised. I mean, you can't go, go wrong with this stamp set. It's just, ah, uh, it's so pretty. Isn't it so pretty? Okay, so now I'm gonna pop this panel into my stamp stamping platform again, and I'm gonna add the sentiment to my project, and it's the lovely uh, sentiment. And it is such a pretty little sentiment. And it's simple. Like, you don't feel like you really need to add a whole lot of other things to it. Like, you are lovely or... You know something like that it just says lovely and it's just a pretty word and the script is so pretty so I'm just using that on its own without any extras because I just wanted to kind of leave it a little bit simple so I'm using my onyx black ink to stamp this it's my favorite ink for stamping sentiments and 
after you stamp with this ink, uh, it can stay wet for a while. So you definitely want to either heat emboss it with some clear um, embossing powder, or you can just heat set the stamp itself, um, which is what I'm gonna do today. I, I'm being lazy. I do love the way it looks when it's heat embossed, but I'm like, can't be bothered to pull out my embossing buddy and my embossing powder and all that kind of stuff. So I just um, stamped it straight away and then just heat set it to make sure because I can't tell you how many times I have smeared a card after it's completely done and just been like, oh, it's just the worst, just the worst thing ever, especially after taking like 45 minutes to color an image. So, okay, finally I'm using some craft foam. I'm using black because that's all I have. Um, and this is just like kids craft foam. It's nothing special. I like to use this kind of craft foam whenever I'm doing like a full panel because watercolor paper is really rigid and, you know, tape doesn't really stick to it very well. I'm using my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to stick it onto the card base itself. And then finally I'm using some sparkling let's see here yeah I'm using some sparkling clear sequence from pretty pink posh and I am gluing all of those down with my glossy accents and I'm super excited because I did a couple of other like I showed you before I had all these cards that I had made with the coloring and while I was editing the video I went ahead and finished those cards some of those cards off that I showed you earlier and um, embellished them in a different way because I was like I want to show how some little different ways that you can embellish and so I was like oh I have those other cards that I made let me just go ahead and embellish those and so I did this one plain with just the sequence but I really wanted to utilize my seed beads um, because I have, I love my seed beads. I just don't use them often enough. And so I was like, what are some different little cool ways that I could use um, my seed beads to go along with this? And I have like this little variety pack of seed beads that I have like just tons of them. And so for the first project here, I put the same sequins down. I used the sparkling clear, but then I put little seed beads in pink inside of the the well area of the sequence and i just think that gives it a nice variety and then here i just use straight up seed beads in different colors like in yellow and blue to just kind of embellish the middles of the flowers and i think it looks really pretty like that too so um these are the cards that i uh kind of finished off for this video and once again, this stamp set is Hello Lovely by Concord and Knight. All the supplies are listed down below. Below, I love this stamp set. So um, pick it up if, uh, if you're interested in following along with this video. And here are some of the still shots. But last but not least, I want to do my shout out for this video. And I have picked someone that is always very active on Instagram. And she's a super sweet lady. And she always comments very kind things. And she's also a fantastic colorist. And her name is Sybil Stevens. And on YouTube, her name is Sybil B, as you can see right here. And on um, Instagram, it's Sybil underscore Stevens. And she's a really great colorist. And she's a lot like me. I think we have a lot of the same style. Like we like to do a bunch of different kinds of things. She also likes to do planner stuff and just a whole bunch of variety of different things. But um, so you guys go check her out. Uh, she's a really sweet gal. And I will see you guys in the next video.